Malaysians aren't happier, they are just more resigned. At least that is what the data from the Malaysian Institute of Economic Research shows, even as the Consumer Sentiment Index avoided new all-time lows for three consecutive quarters. The index rose by 9.1 points to 72.9 points in the first quarter of this year as compared to the previous quarter. But according to MIR Executive Director Dr. Zakaria Abdul Rashid, this was not due to Malaysians feeling upbeat about economic prospects, rather shrugging their shoulders, bowing their heads and accepting the new norm. MIR's report also pointed out that while consumers felt a tad less edgy, they still continued to watch the economy with vigilance as concerns about job security continues to linger. Number one of the big three, Maxis, announced stronger earnings for its first quarter. During that period, Maxis reported a 26% increase in net profit to 518 million ringgit, while revenue remained flat at 2.14 billion ringgit. This was mainly due to lower operating costs as a result of lower network expenses and an increase in postpaid revenue. CEO Martin Landl said the group's good numbers came amid challenging times in the market practically dripping with promotional activities. It has been a tough few months for the telco with bad press about discrepancies in its plans, which resulted in a live public apology by its management. One thing though that should make shareholders smile is the announcement of a tax-free 5 cent dividend to be paid in June. Speaking of telcos, Malaysia's number two of the big three telcos, Cellcom, has said uptown funk to any potential price war. According to CEO Datuk Sri Shalali Ramli, Cellcom will continue to act rationally and not let itself be drawn into a spiraling price war. In the early days, the big three were famous for trying to price match each other in order to gain customers. But the war has settled into an uneasy truce as all tried to increase market share via different promotions. Shazali said Cellcom would be undertaking various smart spending and cost-saving measures to support its bottom line. But he warned that Cellcom could see a slight dip in average revenue per user number in the second quarter of this year as customers switch from voice to data services. However, he expects these to be monetized in the long run, which will subsequently boost ARPU. Independent power producer Malakoff Corporation has earmarked 900 million ringgit for its capital expansion this year. The bulk of this, some 700 million ringgit, will be channeled for the expansion of its Tanjung Bin power plant. According to acting CEO Habib Hussein, the group is eyeing expansion both on the home front and also further afield as part of its efforts to reach its 10,000 megawatt generation target. Malakoff also said that the expansion could come in the form of either new plants or acquisitions. The group also noted that most of the main domestic opportunities this year would be in renewable energy. Management also pointed out that its gearing was still at a manageable level with some wiggle room. Ottoman Arshad, a former officer at the Youth and Sports Ministry, was charged, along with four other individuals, under anti-money laundering legislation in a 100 million ringgit scam at the Sessions Court today. Some weeks earlier, he was also charged, but for a completely brand new set of crimes, forgery and abuse of power. Today, the government officer was charged with 64 counts of receiving funds worth 16 million ringgit through various bank transactions. He claimed trial. If convicted, Otman faces a maximum 15-year jail term or a minimum 5 of 5 million ringgit or both.